Here, nearly a thousand miles from the sea, is where Canada's St. Lawrence River, stemming from the great Lake Ontario, has carved its valley into one of the scenic wonders of the world, the Thousand Islands. Everyone dreams of having a private island, and here they come in all shapes and sizes. The Thousand Islands is just a romantic name for this playground archipelago, for here the river is nine miles wide, and over a 10-mile reach, there are in fact more than 1,500 islands, mostly inhabited, with some of the bigger ones preserved as national parks. Of course, it's a sportsman's paradise, shared by Canada and the state of New York. The frontier follows a zigzag line through the Thousand Island maze of waterways. Some of the scenery could have been copied from a willow pattern plate. The mainlands of Canada and the United States are linked by a series of bridges. And what bridges? There's a boy who knows his way to every single one of the islands. The post boy, who delivers mail daily to the islanders and runs a river taxi service in his spare time. Delivering mail by boat is a job for summertime only. In winter, the river freezes over and you travel by sledge or skates. But now, you can join the post boy in his boat and try to decide which would be your dream island. If someone hasn't already taken the one you want. It's hard to remember that through these peaceful clusters of little islands runs the mighty St. Lawrence Seaway. That mingling with the small river craft, you will suddenly see ocean-going ships, great freighters that have left the sea nearly a thousand miles away, with hundreds of miles more to go across the Great Lakes to Cleveland, Detroit, and points many miles west. This seaway is truly a wonder of the world where big steamers inch their way past your River Island restaurant and rub shoulders with all the small holiday craft. When a river is fed by a great lake and broken into such countless little waterways, it is hard to detect its flow or assess its volume. It seems incredible that there's a channel deep enough for the big ships among such placid backwaters. You've got to cross the great lake to reach another wonder of the world, the swirling Niagara River that feeds the lake to get the measure of water passing through. We're in a cable car over the spot where the Niagara Falls were situated 6,000 years ago. Today, the Niagara Falls are three and a half miles upriver. The falls themselves have gouged out this gorge, cutting the rock down at the rate of three foot a year. The power and fascination of it all has made Niagara itself into Honeymoon City and a mecca for everyone struck with all things wondrous. Niagara Falls are right in town. You don't even have to pay to see them. Just pull up at your Honeymoon Hotel. They won't tease you for being newlyweds, not here. And be patient for a moment. In no time at all, you'll be top of the world. Here's where you'll have your first grandstand view of Niagara Falls. Check in and then find your way up to your bridal suite, taking good care to order a balcony meal with champagne and lobster, and then, but where are Niagara Falls? There they are, right before your astonished gaze.
You see the power that can tear down great boulders. You see geology in action, slowly altering the face of the world. You see the torrential water supply that can fill a great lake and supply a thousand miles of St. Lawrence Seaway with what it takes to float these ocean-going ships. You see, too, beauty that etches itself into your soul. It's hard to believe in such turmoil that there could be anything as stable as a rainbow, such as the grip of this hypnotic water avalanche that once you see it, from the street or from your hotel, from a spray-drenched tourist boat or from up in the air, you forget that it's surrounded by a skyscraper city. Remember as well that there are two separate waterfalls here at Niagara. So far we've only seen one of them, the American Falls. See how different the Canadian Falls look when our elevator gets us to the top of this viewing tower. The Horseshoe Falls, they're called, and we're lucky that they're not entirely obscured by spray. So often you simply can't see them. The Horseshoe Falls are the ones that have been crossed by tightrope and navigated by daredevils in barrels. Don't let me intrude as you view them any further on your wanderings.